Hey, so in this tutorial, we're just going to go through and just start retopologizing slash modeling uh, this piece. So this piece has already been um, sort of prepped from our previous tutorial. Um, and you can download this from the previous tutorial, but it won't be aligned. So you'll have to go through then and do that. And um, in fact, it just makes it easier for to, to model around. So we've got this piece here and if you did follow the previous one, you'll notice it's in a, in a layer and it's as a reference. We have our selection highlighting off. So kind of once you're happy with your position and ready to go, I would probably just freeze your transforms on it and delete your history. Just so if you do accidentally mess up and it ends up, I don't know, like that, it's very easy to happen that you've twisted it. You can see it right here and just uh, zero it out. So because we've effectively done so much of the hard work already just by scanning it, we've got the proportion shapes and all that, we're pretty much going to be mostly retopologizing it but trying to keep it as, as accurate as possible so for this one like you don't have to use Maya you could be doing this in Blender Houdini or whatever software basically I'm just using Maya because I've always used Maya and it's just I'm not gonna learn another piece of software just to do the same thing um, basically and Maya is a pretty good platform to be industry up to date with what people are looking for with jobs so I'm not saying learn by it but I'm saying it will definitely be helpful if you want to get jobs and stuff so with this I'm just gonna actually go straight up to here it's a little magnet thing and just make it live um, and it should pop up here saying which live which means basically I can't select this but it means that now I can actually use my quad draw so quad draw is pretty useful. Um, it just means you can draw on your mesh now. So, um, and the reason why we're kind of doing a model like this, so if I, I can just, once quad draw is selected, I can basically just click, make a quad shape, hold shift and left click. And that's basically it. It's built the geo on top. And we'll do that pretty much for the whole thing. So the reason why I've kind of done something like this, um, more retopology sort of thing, is I guess a lot of places don't, a lot of people don't mention that actually like, when you're scanning stuff, it severely takes a lot of time off the process, and it's extremely efficient with modeling. So that being said, it saves a lot of time which means it saves money and sort of pain. So if a production company can scan an object, they will, which kind of leads to the point you're probably, if you're going in as a modeling artist, you're probably going to end up doing some retopologizing, basically modeling. So albeit there will be things where like, that just don't exist, you can't scan it. So I'm basically just gonna go around and just draw on my mesh. And the good thing about this, we can actually do this quite quickly and um, more focus on, we can have more focus on the actual topology instead of the, because the proportions generally, it because when you're modeling stuff, you'll generally have a blocking stage which we've kind of completely skipped by having the scan because the blocking stage uh, for modeling is, is, is actually massively important because it, uh, it makes sure that you're getting the right proportions and scale and size but we've instantly skipped the modeling part with this and generally that's actually takes that's probably sometimes actually takes the longest time out of the modeling process is the, the making sure everything looks right 
with proportion and scale and stuff so so you'll notice that I am also with hard surface modeling still making sure that my topology is nice because because we've got pretty much like a pretty good setup now of making a really nice model so there's no reason why we shouldn't make it as good as we can and if it's not looking quite right now we can always edit it a little bit later so I'm not going to worry too much about what it looks like now I'm just going to make sure my topology is correct and you'll notice I've got quite a lot of edge loops around here and you might think it's a little bit extreme um, because you've got like quite a lot of varying soft edges, hard edges you can just kind of do it all and keep it simple um, I kind of like to just make sure everything's kind of uniform and nice looking because um, effectively uh, if you're applying for jobs and stuff you're going to want to make sure your topology is nice because they're going to want to see your wireframe basically and a lot of places just won't even so I have done something here which I don't want to do no it's fine I'm just seeing things I think no I'm definitely doing got some extra edge loop here which I've added somehow um, So you can kind of really focus on how your topology is really going to be. Obviously it's looking a bit rough, but you can hold shift and relax and it makes it look all good. Let's say this is not a, a sort of tutorial on hard surface modeling from scratch. It's kind of a bit of more of an insight on what you also might have to do as a modeler. Because it's, uh, yeah, if straight up fact, it's just if you can scan it, it's going to be hello, it's just going to be so much better the results from a good scan is that you're going to like, you can still model it um, as it is but if you're putting a race between someone that's already got the scan and someone that doesn't, and it's just doing it from reference images, the person with the scan will do it like a hundred times faster basically and unfortunately like time Time is money, basically, and if you can make it faster, that option will always be there. That being said, you might not get scanned, so you might have to do it from scratch and some really rubbish reference images. So it's kind of... It could go both ways, really. But the reason for this tutorial, like I said, is not necessarily to go through all the pain of the modelling uh, proportion and blocking because we're going to use this in the entire we've got a whole project for this as well so similar to the bird box and uh, the booble project which I'm trying to interlink them as much as I can so I think you've probably got the idea of what I'm doing here so I am just going to speed it up maybe you don't necessarily need to Watch it.
So, I uh, hope you guys have been enjoying all the tutorials and stuff. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe, it really does help. We've finally made it past 10,000 subscribers. And 300 plus tutorials. Which... A lot of time has gone into, I guess. So effectively, you're just going to do the same thing as we did on the other side. Just build in this edge loop. Yeah, we can worry about how it looks afterwards. No, I'm just doing this really fast because I know I can just. Sorry, it's very early. I'm probably mumbling as well. So I'm doing this very fast because I know I can just use the relax tool afterwards and pull it around. So it's not the end of the world if um, I'm making some nasty looking mesh at the moment. So many done these so I can sort of really iterate on those sort of they're not like super sharp edges, but they're um enough to uh I think have an edge loop in. So I can tidy up these edges because when you're doing this you mostly only have to focus about where the outer edge loop is. Then you can just hold shift and just relax it to death. I generally do a pretty good job of making your mesh look nice. You can see I've got quite a lot of high poly for something that's maybe quite simple, but it's actually got quite a lot of. Um, lumps and bumps in it. It's not like a completely flat, it kind of rolls and it's all warped and bent so the main idea behind this is to make it as close to as it as possible because we will use this for an object track later so all you people that keep asking for more match move tutorials there will eventually be a, a, I guess a match move tutorial on this subject so We'll have a camera and an object track, so you will need to model this at some point. I know you're probably saying, oh, you only want to do match move and stuff, but generally in this today's climate, just knowing one thing is kind of not enough. You kind of really want to be a journalist. Or just have a good idea of a large amount of the pipeline and workflows, because yeah, a lot of competition. So, so I kind of done that top bit, and you can see why. Like, you might think it's quite a lot of poly for the top, but you can see if I just sort of look around, you can see it's all curved and warped and all. And we'll eventually get to that point anyway. So there's no point waiting for it when it's going to be inevitable. Cool. So now I'm just going to start doing this harder edge. Stuff like this you still got to be because it's not, it's a good scan, but it's not like 100% all the way around because you've got this lumpy stuff, so you've just got to be aware of that as well. Kind of like you might have a scan that looks great, but you've also got to kind of think maybe there's some bits that aren't so great. But generally, you can pretty much see this is a pretty, pretty decent scan. And I Probably could have just extruded the whole outer edge, but I kind of just like to control the whole sort of edge loop, making sure it's all nice and, and clean. Because, uh, I don't know, when you're modeling stuff, sometimes stuff happens and you don't notice 
and then like you get to like final stages and you're like cleaning up edges and you're like oh you notice it and then you have to fix it and it becomes quite an annoying task so i know there's lots of faster quicker ways to do this but um it's kind of how i like to do it i don't mind doing things a long slow way but yeah it's not necessarily like i said before it's not necessarily like a full-on modeling because we are modeling but like this is definitely more eritopologizing making sure your sort of edge flow and topology is correct which is actually really important and it gives you enough it allows you to focus on that and not have to worry about it looking weird afterwards you can kind of just work on the topology cool so we won't relax next we still want to keep that hard edge because if we relax that now it's just going to pull everything away and effectively undo it so because it's sort of thinning off here what we'll do is do add one more edge loop that's tight Then what we can do, we'll add one more. Because we don't particularly want to keep adding. Otherwise we'll start creating sort of ridges. And all sorts of nastiness. So we'll just add one more and this will be our sort of, our leveler. Where we'll come away from the edge loop, we'll break away and this will be effectively the bottom edge. So, the best way to do this is what have I done? What is it? Let me undo that. You want to add a kite. My brain's completely broken right now. Um, cool, so we've added a kite here. Which means now we've got all this sort of mess here. Just so keep this. Oh, is it keep this hard edge and it will allow us to uh, sort of carry on but um, probably picked the worst area to do that in right now so <laughs> let's actually skip that part out of the entire scan that was probably the worst place to do that Uh, we go for it. And it's all good. So even though I've done this countless times, still get sort of head scratcher moments. So don't worry about it. it happens. 
and I've not planned this, so like with all my tutorials, I just wing it from what I can kind of think of at the time. And I know it's probably not the most optimal way of doing it, but it allows you to see my mistakes as well. Because you see all these tutorials where like they're blasting through it with no mistakes. And it's I'm not gonna call it out, but I'm just gonna say it's absolute absolute rubbish. People make so many mistakes and it's so uh, a lot of the stuff is very rehearsed. And I'm gonna be honest, I don't really have the time to rehearse tutorials. <laughs> Okay, cool. So we've actually come to an interesting part, point here. So we've got this bit that we need to get in. So we can just add loads more edge loops, but um, then it's going to be over this side and we don't really need it. So what I will do is I'll just add I'm going to add enough geometry in here to create this separately. Then what I'm going to do, I'm going to figure out I'm going to figure out the bit afterwards. Cool, so that's enough. I feel that's definitely enough geometry to get that working. I can actually pull this to that one, I think. Okay. If we don't want to add, like, you're more than welcome to like add all those extra edge loops over the top, but I think it's probably a good idea if we try not to. So cool. So now we've reduced this down to from one, two, three, four, five extra well, one, two, three, four extra edges. We've now only added one extra edge, basically. So I can live with that. I can live with one extra. And you see, we've now managed to get that detail without actually adding a huge amount of uh, geometry to the rest of it. Uh, we probably could actually remove those. There's some nasty nuffs going on there. So yeah, I guess this is um, definitely a focus on a nice topology, I guess. Sometimes quadraw is actually really annoying. It doesn't quite go to the place you want it to. And we can relax this a bit, just so it's not so nasty. You don't want to do it too much because you might actually break it. Well, you won't break it, it just might. Because we're actually not that super high to relax it quite insanely. It will just relax a lot over the top. Actually, bring that down. Cool. So, yeah. I hope you guys have been enjoying these tutorials. I'm not. I did take quite a long break from doing them because uh, I don't know. It's uh, nice to have a break. Uh, to be honest, I wasn't getting very many views on it, so it was a bit uh, depressing. But I come back and I'm going to try and ignore the fact that I don't really get very many views. And I put too much time into it, but it's actually 
at some point quite therapeutic to do tutorials and if it helps it's good if it helps one person it's good enough for me I'm not really a I'm not really a face for fame so it doesn't bother me cool. so we've got like another bit here which we could add some more geometry to I think just our out of practice we should do it anyway and it is effectively just as simple as adding this sort of edge loop I don't know if that was a good choice there, but um, we'll soon find out, that's for sure. No, no, oh, I thought it frozen there. <laughs> Luckily we've got quite a straight hitch here, so we can... Uh, I could have added another edge loop there, but... I don't know. I didn't want to. <laughs> which, is, which is a lot of the case of... Uh, modeling. There are a million ways to do the same thing, so you don't have to necessarily do something if you don't want to. <laughs> so you went three edge loops down on this bottom bit, so we want to make sure that we also go three. Because you don't want to suddenly go to work away all the way around the other side, then realize you've got a mismatch of polygons. So that's also very annoying. So, the one thing I do try to keep, I know we've got these kites, which are kind of these shapes here, albeit not ideal, but they're not bad, basically. Um, I feel I have made some sort of mistake here, and it's going to hurt my brain to figure out what I have actually done. No, it should should have done that. I kind of like to keep make sure like adding my kites are not near what like this is just off. This is not really a hard edge, but this at the bottom bit is probably going to be a much harder edge. So I kind of like to make sure that these are a little bit away from that, just so we don't accidentally cause any pinching. So the other things I'm going to make sure that I kind of. I'm not going to bring this all the way down to the bottom because I know it kind of gets a little scan gets a little bit funky around the edge. So we'll just do a kind of a global extrude on the edge when the time comes. That is, but for now it is not yet. And this is definitely a time where you can like really focus on getting your it is nice. Having a nice sort of spacing between your polygons. And you can just roughly do it. Then just relax afterwards. And see where the relaxation takes you. Obviously you don't want to go too far to the edge because that might break. At the moment might like we will probably add another edge loop because if we smooth this it's probably going to smooth it a little bit too much but, um, but we can just focus on making sure our geometry is looking nice which is probably the most important thing for your uh, show reels because you will have if you're doing modeling you will have to show your topology
it does make it a hell of a lot easier that we have the same hand because I can literally just pull the vertices around and I know they're gonna sort of work and not pull them in a weird orientational position. So at the moment I am just trying to avoid smoothing that edge. Cool, so we'll just continue going around. I'd kind of like to try and make sure that I do keep it. Nope. Keep doing that every time. Sometimes it, yeah, it's good as quad draw is. Sometimes it is, it is annoying. Not gonna lie, but it is. Uh, it's great. And not gonna lie, it's pretty. I use it a lot. Because even when I'm modeling stuff from scratch, I know that if I just go really rough on the blocking stage, I can just merge them all together, all the sort of objects that I've done, and then I can just create the topology correctly around it. But then, yeah, there are a lot of ways you, you can model. There's no like one true way. All you can do is make, basically make sure that you keep your topology nice and clean. And that's kind of the, I guess the one golden rule. And we are almost at half an hour. I'm going to try and keep these tutorials at 30 minutes or 40 minutes max because, to be honest, you guys, I'm not sure if you even watched the ones that are over half an hour. So let's actually build that bit properly. Thank you to all the people that do watch my really long tutorials and I hope they've been helpful. Let's turn that bloody grid off. So let's place this actually in a bit better position. So this bit here is kind of getting gross. It's not kind of how I want it to look. I actually ideally want to be something like this, but I think for this case we can just add an extra edge loop in there because we've got a slight curve, but I don't think there's anything that really needs extra edge loops. It's not super crazy. We can do like an over a general cleanup afterwards as well. But it's always good to sort of try and keep it tidy as you go along. I'm going to try and get through this last bit as fast as I can. I 
probably could have fast forwarded this because it's a lot of the same. Oh, I don't know. You might be really enjoying me watching doing the same thing over and over. <laughs> kind of got another cheeky little curvy bit here, so we'll do that again. Probably could have brought this bit up into here. So, do we need that bit? Let's delete those. Let's see if that makes a difference. Because I can just drag this one up. I don't know, it's looking pretty rough right now, but. Once we've got this edge sorted, we can work on all the nastiness. edges at the moment. God, I keep hitting it. <sighs> Come on, you can do it. So I'm changing your angle of how you're seeing it helps. Kind of put that one too close to the edge, I think. Cool. So we maintain that that's always a hard edge there. I kind of keep these kites away from anything that gives them an opportunity to be nasty. And hopefully we have actually gone all the way around and there's not been any weird moments where we've actually added too much geometry and had a mismatch because that gets annoying if you do that so it's always really good to keep an eye on how many edges you're adding and stuff like that so we'll go around and actually relax this bit Let's just try and make this as close to what it is. which is not working on using our relax tool to give us a nice smooth geometry just by moving the boundary edge because the relax tool will kind of force it in a direction where you probably want to go anyway 
it's kind of a good indicator of where you want to go with your uh, edge flow. So it's looking pretty good around there. And obviously I'm just kind of doing a lot of this bit by eye, the distance. You will spend more time on this for sure. Um, depending on how quick you are. Um, even though this has taken me like 40 minutes. Um, in the grand scheme of things, it's not really taken that long for a model. Like 40 minutes. And you've basically got a highly accurate representation of what you needed to do. Sounds pr it sounds pretty pretty good to me. So let's just tidy up this, making sure it's sort of matching. Because the goal of this is to try and make it as close to one to one of the actual thing that we're going to shoot, which is the flamethrower. Because if you model it and it doesn't work for match move and stuff like that, or anything that else that needs to go on. You just have to redo it. Um, so modeling things as accurately as you can is pretty important. That's why scanning stuff is a, uh, cuts a huge amount of time off there. And it gives you a chance to sort of focus on more topology stuff. Oh no, I'm probably repeating myself as well, but we're so close to the end and I don't know what else to say. Apart from I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm trying to do something a little bit different. There's not many other tutorials out there that we're going to work with. <coughs> Doing shots with real stuff. I'm trying to make in all my... The difference between like, I'd say my tutorials, I try and do it very heavily industry based. That's why some of them take a little bit longer because things don't take, things can't really be done in five minute tutorials. These are kind of more walkthroughs anyway instead of tutorials. So not everyone's at the same level. So some people prefer it this way, some people don't. So it kind of feels like a huge data dump on my brain, but yeah, it's fine. Cool, so we're at 40 minute, three minutes in and we've kind of done a pretty nice representation of our model. And we can spend quite a long time tweaking this. Ooh. So one of the main reasons why I have kind of left, we can, right, if we smooth it, let's turn off our quad draw and have a look. You can see it's kind of, it's pretty good to be honest, but we're slightly under and over in some places and it probably doesn't matter but um if i did smooth this it would push quite a long way away from the edge so what we can do we can add like um you don't have to do this but i like i do like because when working with hard surface i do like to add reinforcing edges just so now, if I do just relax around this edge, it's going to relax mostly towards that edge and not do anything. We've added enough geometry in there for that relax to work nicely. And yet we have added a lot of polys for quite a simple shape. But um, we're not doing this for games. And if you want to do it for games, you just effectively just do a poly reduce on it. And there we go. You've got the... <laughs> Exact same thing, just much less poly. But because we're doing this for VFX, we want it as close to the scan as possible. I have no problems with making it a bit high poly than it needs to be. And obviously you're gonna get points where some strange stuff is now happening. It looks like it's kind of done some weird stuff there. The part of the scan is a bit odd. We need to bring this edge back, I think. Ooh. Let's just... Oh, my God. 
Okay, my uh, relaxer stopped working. What is going on? There's something strange going on here. Uh, it's gone into my component. Oh no. I don't really know what's happened here. Uh, I think I had to move on. <laughs> Probably not a good idea to have on. So we're going to have some where it kind of dips in. And you're just going to have to manually pull it around. Cool. So I'm just going to go around and relax all of this so it fits nicely over the geometry. Like I say, the only reason I've got such a large amount of geometry is because I want it as close to the actual scan as possible. And there's a mix of hard edge and soft edge in here, so all that matters is that if our topology is good. This is kind of why I like working with Quadraw. Once you kind of go around it, relax that edge with those extra edge loops. Just going to get a really nice result. So we are very close to being done on this bit. Obviously there are a couple other bits that we need to do on this. Um, man, it's been like an hour, almost 40, 50 minutes. The reason why I say that is the closer, the more it goes over half an hour, the more I know that probably people are not going to watch it, which is a bit annoying, but hey, it is what it is, isn't it? Everyone's in a rush these days. But you can watch most of this and just like skip through to the end, see if there's anything else. Or just podcast it. Have me going on in the background or something. Nice soothing clicks. All them clicks. I really need to get a silent mouse or something because it does. Now I've noticed it, it's quite annoying. Cool. And to be honest, quite happy with that. It's all working. There's no need to dwell on it. And now you can see it sort of all fitting quite nicely. Cool. So I'm just going to turn my live surface off. Different poly surface. And I'll just delete the history off of it so now like you can go around and model the inside um not really gonna see it ever but what you might do unless you like do a complete strip down of it um let's turn our oh that's weird uh oh no it wasn't on uh we're not necessarily gonna see it so it's entirely down to you if you want to do the same thing for the inside i am literally just gonna go face and extrude it and I'm pretty sure this is about one millimeter thick so hopefully if I do 0 0.1 cool got some really messed up stuff going there what's that doing
Cool, so we've got our out bit and let's try that. Um, let's freeze our transforms and center it. That's probably going to break it. So, um, anyway, let's, uh, or maybe I should have tried that. Maybe it was just because oh, I should have tried. Oh my god, what's going on? The local translate. That's my bad. And we probably want to go minus 0 0.1. About a millimeter, I think. Yeah, that was my fault. So, and we just look at that. It looks like it's, it's it, for what we're going to see when, like, you can go into doing all this if you want. That's perfectly up to you. Um, personally, I'm not going to do this because we're not really going to see it. I'm going to still do these bits, but um, for now, we're just going to focus on not doing the, spending so much time on the inside because we're not going to see it, basically. So what I will do, I'll just double check everything's kind of like not doing anything weird. Because when you do stuff like this, stuff weird stuff always happens. Like this, I'm just going to clean up these. This end, it all seems alright. That's not done anything wildly crazy. So I'm just going to go mesh display in reverse so it's the normals are the correct way around. So obviously, if we smooth now, you could probably get away with that, but um, for the sake of doing things right and not having stretching weirdness in um, your textures later on. What I will do is add a, and hopefully if you've done this correctly and you have a nice edge loop, you should just be able to use multi cut. Select one down the middle. So you could just do that, and that would probably work. But the problem is with that, that's um, for this case it's so small you probably wouldn't notice. There is a different tool which is super useful which I use all the time as well. If you hold shift and right click, transform component, it's pretty much one of my favorite tools. And if you do that, it will push it all sort of on its normal together. So if I did it that way, you kind of see what it's doing in that direction, in that direction. But for pulling it up, it's quite nice. And it'll allow us to sort of create that edge we didn't have. So it's roughly about right. I hate that. You can't do that. Go back on that. Whoops. I'm making a mess now near the end. Alright, cool. So obviously we can do that, but then I also can't like just go a little bit over the top and add um an extra edge on it so it's not and you can even go as crazy as adding three if you want a sort of much harder edge. Cool. So you should have something like this. And um, it's pretty close to being one to one with that outer shell. And we are six minutes for being an hour of doing retopology, which is um yeah, that's quite a long time. Not a long time for me uh, to actually do it, but it would. I would really appreciate it if you guys actually watched it. <laughs> you don't have to, but I would like it if you know I me. Mean. Cool. So we've done that, and obviously the inside is a little. This is actually like in here. There's a rubber step, so this isn't actually metal. There's like a, a leathery, rubbery bit, which is stuffed in here. So I think in the next bits we'll just um, make these separately and have them as separate mesh and decide later if we want to actually make it one giant chunk. It's not something that we can't do. Um, it's something that's not very necessary. Cool, so yeah, that's that. I know it's been quite long. We will actually name this. Uh, 
and naming stuff is pretty important. I'll just get used to naming stuff uh, pretty sensible. So actually, um, I call this flamethrower, but which is the butt stock thing, and I'll just call it. It's a metal for my shader. And it's also a subdivision mesh, so I know that anything here is a is from the flamethrower. It's the butt part, the best part. Uh, and it's a metal shader. It's going to be a metal shader, and then it's subdivision mesh. Cool. So hopefully that's been useful. I know it's been like an hour. Um, if you've made it that long, uh, if you've made it to this point, say I don't know koala bear in the comments. I know you've watched the entire thing. So if I see someone write koala bear, and uh, I don't know why koala bear, but if I see that in the comments, I know you watched the whole thing. Anyway. Um, yeah, leave any comments, likes, and stuff like that. It's very much appreciated. Thanks for all your support, and uh, see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.